Hey guys, Brian here. So, um, our inaugural show for News Talk 99.5 WRNO had a few technical difficulties, but I did what I could with it in post. And so here it is, uh, our very first show on the FM band for your listening pleasure. Enjoy. Resistance is futile. Boldly going where no show has gone before. This is The Week in Geek with David D. Squared and Brian Held. Heard live on News Talk 99.5 WRNO and the iHeartRadio app. Here are your hosts, Brian Held and D. Squared. And now, your top nerd news stories from around the world. Brought to you by Kasha's Bazaar. Find them at 5727 Jefferson Highway. And now, our top nerd news stories. There's a huge controversy surrounding X-Men Gold number 1 in that uh, one of their artists put some, we'll say, um, religious messages related to the Indonesian uh, protests that are happening right now. And uh, folks are, are up in arms about this. Dave, what do you what do you think? All right, so just lay it out. What is it? It, it was uh, X Men Gold, the, the, X- the latest number one, uh, right. yeah, number one. So you got Kitty Pride in front of there, and and they're putting hidden messages into the comic book panels. You've got two one two. Seems innocuous enough. Right. And then you've got Q515. It's QS. QS515. Okay, so wh- whichever. Same thing. Right. All right, so if you don't know anything about Indonesia, if you don't know anything about the Koran, what is, it doesn't mean anything to you. Well, yeah, right. But there are people who understand what these messages are. It's specifically a uh, verse, chapter and verse out of the Koran itself. Um, which some consider a bit controversial, a bit divisive. And uh, we were kind of setting this up before the show. I, I don't think this is acceptable behavior in, in comics, right? Okay. I mean, comics are important. Comics um, give us what what's the zeitgeist, right? They're, it's social commentary. That's important. Right. But this sort of um, covert type of insertion of a, of a message is, is not really cool. All right, well, I mean, look, it, it, it's fine, but, I mean, it, it's still the artist's prerogative to do whatever the hell they want. If, if they – hold on. Let me finish. Yes. If, 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 if they can do whatever they want. They're the artist. They can put in hidden messages. If they want to draw little wieners, they can do whatever <sighs> they want. I, look, I'm, I'm being serious, though. If, if they want to slip in some, you know, phallic images into their comic books, there's nothing really stopping them unless some, you know, mothers against phallics – Things are, you know, notice it and then complain. So you you do make a point as far as the Comics Code Authority doesn't exist anymore. However, we can relate back to Captain America number one way back during World War II where Cap punches Hitler, right? Yeah. That was a year before America entered the war. Okay. Right? And Marvel Comics got death threats because of that, all right? Here's the deal, though. Everybody was on board from the editors all the way down. In this instance, you have an artist who is working for Marvel Comics, who okay. is who is putting his own kind of message into this without any editorial approval. I, I don't think that's cool. It's not his property. If he was self-publishing, more power to him. He could do it all day long. But he is working for Marvel Comics, and they didn't approve that. It's not cool. All right. Well, okay. You know what? Let's just move on. All right. Our second <laughs> top nerd news story is, uh, man, folks were angry, angry at Dallas people? Fan Expo. Right. So uh, uh, Norman Reedus and Jeffrey Dean Morgan, Negan from The Walking Dead and Daryl from The Walking Dead. Women love them some Daryl. <laughs> yes. Love them some Negan. And uh, they were in line for upwards to five to eight hours to get pictures with them. Spent like $200, $300 for these pictures. Right. And then... By Saturday evening, they still hadn't got the pictures, and then the celebrities left to get on a jet plane to go back to L.A. So, but they were contractually obligated to go to L.A. to be on, uh, what is it, Talking Dead. Yes. Right? And there were weather delays with the airlines. They had to get to to their obligation, right? And right, it's right. known that guests can't always make appearances or cut appearances short at these events. I mean, I understand that folks are, are, are you know, rightly angered by it. Yeah. But. Well, here's the thing, is that 
you and I have been going to these conventions forever. Right. We know one thing that is certain. It will never go according to plan. <laughs> it will never go according to plan. We are living that proof right now that things will never go according to plan. Right. <laughs> exactly. But no yeah. one's paying for our show right now. So if they don't get the whole thing, they're not going to be upset. Now, if I'm paying for this, this, this wonderful service that we provide. Right. If we put it in the footnotes that, you know, hey, shows might not be perfect. They might not work all the time. But, you know, hey, whatever. We're going to give you a refund if you're not happy with it. Right. And Fan Expo Dallas did that. They gave back the refunds. But people have got their panties still in a twist. You know, right, rightfully so. Right. Spending five, eight hours in there. But it comes with the territory. All right. True. People are saying, all right, I'm, I'm gonna, I, I drove eight hours to get to Dallas. Okay. Well, you know what? It happens. It's on there. They, it's got like a fight card when you're going to a boxing match. You know, cards are subject to change. At least, it is quite possible that it can always change at any time. At least they had an opportunity. Some people had an opportunity to get that autograph. Some guests uh, canceled the day before. One, one lady, one lady uh, was eleven people away from getting her, getting that, that, yeah, getting the autograph and the picture. And, uh, well, you know, it, it, look, it happens, but they got refunded. So, right. I mean, look, running these conventions is not an easy thing to do. Now, when you're, when you're cat herding roughly, I think they had, what, 8,000 people or 5,000 people? An obscene like, number. They, at, what, well, Dallas Fan Expo has tens of thousands of people that attend. Okay, well, yeah. whatever the damn number was, Brian, I don't care about right. the number. 5,000 5, is All a right. big-ass number of people trying to get pictures, okay? Because right. not everybody there was going there to get pictures. Okay, All right. All right, so... It it is, it is pretty hard to get all these people to stay in line, and then the celebrities don't always act according to your own wishes either. Well, you know, they, some of them decide to go out and get drunk with local celebrities in the Dallas area. <laughs> you never know. Right. But, uh, I mean, look, this is this is a problem, though. You're going to have to, uh, as a convention goer, it's going to happen. It is. You know, I mean, you, you, you have to understand that going in. Now that these conventions are becoming more popular, more mainstream, more pop culture you know, we're getting a lot of people that don't know how these things go yeah. showing up. So they're just like, oh, my God, they, they didn't sign my baby. You <laughs> bastards. Right. Well, you know what? I, look, it happens. It does. You know, go to the next damn con. Right. All right. Well, I drove eight hours. Well, drive four hours to one that's close to you or drive 12 because they're going to be around because they want your damn money. They right. want the money and it's going to happen. All right, moving on, Brian. Yes, uh, Doctor Who news. Doc they fired the new girl because okay. she was black and she was gay. They fired her. No, that is untrue. Uh, that's not. That, that, but the internet said that. No, well, the, the <laughs> internet said she was fired for being black Dave, and gay. Dave, no, no, that's not true. Oh. So the internet lies <laughs> all the time. Okay, all right. Don't listen to Wikipedia. I saw a cat playing a piano. <laughs> I saw it happen. <laughs> okay, Dave. Okay. So fine. here's the deal: is that um, this season, of course, is the last season for Peter Capaldi. Right? We're moving on. We're getting a new. Who's Peter doctor. Capaldi? The, That's the new doctor. The current doctor. For people who aren't paying attention. Right. Yeah. So, um, you know, we're we're wrapping up this doctor's tenure. We're going to get right. a new doctor next season, which hasn't been announced. Right. And we don't know who that is. It's speculated that they kind of want to clean the slate for an entire new slew of writers and, Ste and directors. Stephen and Moffat. 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 Right. He got. He, he's he's done too. Yes. He's, he's out. Right. He's out. So there. It, all these people were his choices. So they're bringing in a new director. The right. new director wants a clean slate. But so he didn't fire because she was black and gay? No, it hasn't been confirmed I want to be yet. angry, though. She could be still in the new series. We don't know. It's not definitive. It's all speculative. Well, one Dave. thing that they were dead wrong about on the internet is that, that <laughs> she's not their first openly gay character. She's not. It's John Barrowman. Look, yeah. I mean, <laughs> yeah, that dude loves him some men. Oh, dude, look. <laughs> him and uh, James Marsters just, you know, throwing oh my, down. When, when, wait, no. That was in Torchwood. You, you don't remember that episode? No. Oh, they totally, like, they Oh, stop a, talking. They stop. They had a fist la, fight, la, la, and then they la, made out, la, and it was fantastic. La, 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 <laughs> Please stop. It's good stuff, Dave. Thanks, pal. You're welcome. All right, <sighs> moving on. Yes, um, please. All right. Wait, Grand Admiral Zahn. We, man, we do whatever the hell we want. Come okay. on. Keep on going. Grand Admiral Thrawn. Yes. Grand Admiral Thrawn. Grand Admiral Zahn. Timothy Zahn, the author who created Grand Admiral Thrawn. He's the blue guy in Star Wars. He is. He's the really cool guy with the snazzy uniform for the Empire. He <laughs> he's in – well, he, we, we've talked about it before. Right. You know, he, he is – Star Wars Rebel, they brought him back because – when they rebooted Star Wars uh, uh, The Force Awakens, all the books that had been being published for the past 30 years were suddenly 
you know, wiped off. It's mythology. It, it, it's yeah, they call yeah. it legends. Right. So none of it is canon. Canon meaning that it is fact. And so now, when they put Grand Amethron in that cartoon that all your kids watch, and quite a few Star of us Wars adults, Rebels. Star yeah. Wars Rebels, uh, he became legit. He was yes. real. Well, now there's rumors that uh, he's going to be in the next Star Wars movie, or the the one after that, or I, an entirely know, spinoff. But what? Well, I'm just I'm excited. I hope okay. they put him in the next uh, episode eight because episode seven left me wanting, wanting more, right? Uh, well, no, wanting just... more. Yeah, you want more. <sighs> All right. So Benicio del Toro, they're rumored that he's going to play Grand Admiral Fawn. Thoughts quickly. I, I I think it would be fantastic. I like eh, him as... wrong answer. What? I he's... like him as an actor. I don't. He's weird looking. What, what do you mean? He's going to be covered in blue makeup, Dave. I know. It's He's so, have so red eyes. Well, let's find somebody <laughs> who will look good covered in blue makeup. I, th- I don't like. All right, this is why I don't like him. <laughs> I don't like his character in, in Guardians of the Galaxy, the Collector. He's too. He's too twitchy. He's too weird. And and I. He was not. I did not believe his character at the end when when someone who's got this massive power, he's basically a godlet. Yes. He's a little demigod. Right. But at the end of, of 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 Guardians of the Galaxy, when he's sitting there holding all his broken toys, he I, he, he looked so impotent and sad and, and the character I no longer felt that this was a character with any kind of, you know, strength to it. But he's and an eccentric, Dave. I think that that plays to I the character. I also didn't like that movie The Werewolf that he was in with with, <laughs> with with uh with who was the guy? Uh the oh, man I, I uh, don't know. Clello Clarice. Anthony Hopkins, thank you. Yeah. Stop looking at your damn phone. I'm, well, Scungy needs the call in. No, we don't. We don't need him right now. Oh jeez. All right. So, all right, you know what, Brian? What? Talk amongst yourselves. Let's talk Batman. All right. right. Introduce our guest because we forgot to lay out the show. Well, <laughs> that's true. We're having all kind of technical difficulties. Our guest, who's coming on in a little while, is Mr. Mike Mayhall. He is a writer, a director, <laughs> a fight director. That's right? a fight direction. Yes. And um, so he's. We're going to be talking to you in the third segment or the, sometime. The third. I, we're going to have a. We're going to have another segment at some at point. At some point in time, and we're going to talk. <laughs> but. <sounds> uh, <laughs> So uh, yeah, what do you what do you think? We were talking earlier about uh, this Batman news. Um, oh, with yeah. Val Kilmer. Val right? Kilmer tweeted out he was kind of being silly, and he uh, sent a message to Michael Keaton, Christian Bale, George Clooney, and was saying, "Hey guys, we should all get together with Ben Affleck." I- I think it's great. Yeah. I think it's fantastic. Yeah, I mean, you know, they basically are like, hey, let's all be villains in the next uh, Batman movie and get killed by Ben Affleck. I think that would be fant. I just, I, I am so on board with this. Like, I, I would like to see that happen right now. I just oh, think it would be great. I, th- I think it would and, too. And maybe a massive apology for some of the Batman movies that that have been out. <laughs> the the bat nipples. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know. <laughs> all right, guys, stay tuned. When we get back, we're gonna talk to our boy Scungy. He's gonna give us a great. video video game review he's going to surprise us i don't even know what it is so guys you're listening to the week in geek on news talk 99.5 wrno you've waited for it and now it's here get your very own week in geek radio show t-shirt and help support our show these 100 percent cotton black t-shirts with the week in geek radio show logo are going fast so don't wait. Go to twigradio.com and order your shirt now. Just go to twigradio.com forward slash shop and get your very own Week in Geek Radio Show t-shirt. 15 bucks up to XL, $17 for 2X and 3X. That's twigradio.com forward slash shop. Friends, is your morning tea just not your cup of tea? Then try the tea blends of Viridian Tea Company. At Viridian Tea Company, they sell blends guaranteed to make you think outside the box. With such blends as My Enemy's Tears, Goth Librarian, Cyberpunk, and many more, your tea experience will be out of this world. Look for the blends at Tubby and Coo's Mid-City Bookshop, located at 631 North Carrollton, or on Etsy at Viridian Tea Company. Try Viridian Tea Company today. Your taste buds will thank you. Tubby and Coo's Mid-City Bookshop at 631 North Carrollton just off Orleans and Carrollton. Books, board games, and geeky t-shirts. Find them on the web at tubbyandcoos.com and sign up for their geekly newsletter. Tubby and Coos, more than books. Jezebel Johnston, Devil's Handmaid by Nancy Hansen, is now an audiobook 
read for you by Brian Held. It's a tale of a young girl from Tortuga who disguises herself as a boy and bluffs her way onto a pirate ship, chasing after her one true love, only to find adventure on the high seas. Jezebel Johnston, Devil's Handmaid, is available on Amazon, Audible, and iTunes. Get your copy of Jezebel Johnston today. Hey there, Gulf Coast. Hattiesburg's only comic book and pop culture convention, Southern Geek Fest, is coming May 20th and the 21st to the Forest County Multipurpose Center. Two days of comic books, cosplay, media guests, authors, vendors, and more. Southern Geek Fest has a huge lineup of guests, including Peyton Witch from Stranger Things and Don Teams from The Walking Dead. For tickets and more information, go to southerngeekfest.com. Southern Geek Fest, we'll see you there. When you're in need of pain relief, come to Need It Relief Massage Therapy. Kat is an experienced licensed massage therapist. Check out her website and book your session online now at MassageTherapyKM.com. Need It Relief Massage Therapy for some much needed relief. Now back to the Week in Geek with local celebrity, Brian Held, hashtag LCBH. Here are your hosts, local celebrity, Brian Held, and uh, and that other guy. Uh, what's his name again? Welcome back, New Orleans. You're listening to The Week in Geek on WRNO 99.5 News Talk. This is Brian Held with The Week in Geek. I'm here, joined by Mr. Mike Mayhall. He is a writer, director, fight director, and stuntman. Directing and, and fight directing. Yeah, all kind of crazy stuff you're into. How you doing? I'm doing great. Thanks for having me. That's fantastic. So um, the one thing that, that I wanted to start the conversation with mm-hmm. is uh, Jake's Road is a production that you did. Yeah. 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 Uh, Jake's Road is a, it's a, a true independent film that we shot here in Louisiana. It is a Louisiana film. And uh, we did it a couple years ago, and um, it's got uh, uh, Eric Roberts. You right. may recognize in it. And then a full local cast and local crew. Uh, we basically scrounged together enough money, put it out of our pockets, put it on the table, and made a movie. And, okay. uh, and it's out. It's out there. It's, uh, you can find it on iTunes. You can find it on Amazon. But, um, and I won't bore you with all the details, but recently um, I just posted it up on Vimeo. Right. And uh, for the listeners here today, what I've done is I've created a special little code, uh, code 99. Okay. For 99.5. Nice. Or for the 99 cent rental. Okay. So if you go to Vimeo On Demand, you right. type in little, the promo code, you fill, type 99, you'll get a 99 cent rental. And you that's, can watch Jake's Road. That's super cool. Thank yeah. you so yeah. much for that. Yeah. I guess so, I, I should tell you what it's about. It's, uh, it's a horror film. It's a horror thriller with a little bit of action in it. And uh, I think it's got something for everybody. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Totally. You're going to like it. I don't, I, I'm, well, I'm really bad at explaining because I'm going to give it away. Oh, <laughs> I'm going to totally I, give it away. But it's a good film. It's got a lot of it's got a lot of quality to it. Well, I, I caught the trailer and it was very suspenseful. I'm, yeah. you know, I'm, I'm very drawn Woo-hoo. in. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> you, you got a lot of accolades. For- oh, yeah. We we um we got great reviews uh, from the horror society dot uh, com spats of blood, legless corpse, all these wonderful fan um. Uh, horror sites. Um, they just loved the film. They gave us rave reviews. Um, I mean, it was it was great. I couldn't believe it. You know, especially right. uh, this was my first feature film. I've done several short films. I've been working in the industry for a, a long time, more years than I care to remember. Right. Um, so coming out of the gate like that with all these fantastic reviews, and then getting uh, worldwide distribution. You know, right out of the gate, it was it was fantastic. That's and, cool. Uh, yeah. It was, oh man, it's totally cool. So so Vimeo, that's the you know straight to digital distribution. I mean, how's that work? For you, it it works pretty good. We're we're just up on it. Um, so to try to make a long story short, um, the distribution distribution company that we were with, um, it it went out of business. It went bankrupt. Oh wow! <laughs> yeah. So so I had to fight sort of uh, with their lawyers, and we got our film back. I got the the rights to it back. Okay. But since it's already up on like iTunes and, and Amazon, if you go there and buy it, then the the lawyers get the money. Ah. Uh, but if you go to Vimeo, then the cast and the crew and the investors. Get get the money, and then the idea is to take that and then reinvest it into other projects, right. be it short films or other feature films here in Louisiana, which is what I want to do ultimately. Yeah, yeah. definitely. Yeah, you know, keep it here, keep the business here. Right. Well, and it, so I mean, what's your take right now on the state of the Louisiana film industry? I know uh, we're expecting some changes soon, right? Right. Right. So, uh, what- I, you know, I, I have to say I haven't kept up with the changes because every time I turn around, somebody wants to get rid of it. The last news report I saw, somebody wanted to get rid of the tax credits. And, and here's what I have to say about that. Don't. 
right. don't do it. There's like 15,000 plus people who are employed by the industry. That's directly employed by the film industry. And if and if those incentives goes away, go away, Hollywood doesn't care. They yeah. do not care that there's infrastructure here and that there's actors here and there's crew members here and that people's families are here. They don't care. They will leave. They will go up to Atlanta. They will get the tax credits and then everybody will be out of work. Or even worse, there'll be a big like brain drain, right? And everybody will move right. up to Atlanta. Well, and and Atlanta has already taken all the blockbusters from us. Oh right? yeah, they've taken. They've got the Marvels. <laughs> they've got Marvel up there. Right. You know, we don't need to give them anything else. Well, and, and as I understand it, the the industry is not completely dead in Louisiana. We're getting a lot of the mid range. Oh right? yeah, we have a lot of really great mid range movies coming in. We've got some several TV series like uh, Queen Sugar. Um, there's rumors that the Marvel, there's a new Marvel TV series, might be coming down here. Is that the new Defenders? Uh, uh, no, no, no. It's uh, um, I, I don't even know. I'm afraid to say it, but let's just say there's rumors that a Marvel okay. TV show is coming here, um, which would be very, very exciting. Yes. Um, and there's a lot of there's several movies that are floating around the filming here right now, which is just fantastic. It's you, anytime if you're driving down the street and you see like a little yellow sign with weird letters or words you don't understand, that's a movie. There's a movie in the area. Um, yeah. being filmed. That's that's like the movie little call signs. Just turn here for movie, essentially. Right. But I, I wouldn't go. You know, don't go show it up and crash it. That yeah. would be good. Yeah, it'd be a little weird. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, well, you know, so you and I first met, actually, on a local production. On a local movie set, right? Right. That yeah. was Tenet Noctis. Tenet Noctis, yeah. Yeah. So any any updates on, on what's going on with that? I haven't heard it. Um, So I've seen, and I'm pretty sure you've seen the big, the big trailer, the teaser trailer that they did. Right. right? They, they revealed that at CoastCon. We were there. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And which, that was awesome. Which was great. And that was a fantastic production to be a part of because that, that totally utilized everyone in the area. You had you know, writers and directors, fight choreographers. Uh, Brian, you're an amazing swordsman. Oh, thank you. Know, you. Busting oh out the. Oh, uh, yeah. Don't suck up to <laughs> them. What is that? <laughs> it's true. It's true. No, but. It, and we had a lot of fun. It, well, tell me. Tell me, speaking of fighting with swords, mm-hmm. your your fight direction, like where where does that come from? Um, uh, let's see. Woo. So um, a long time ago, when I was in college, um, I uh, I was studying theater, and I because I thought I was going to be on Broadway, and a guy showed up and he says, "I teach sword fighting and stage combat for film and television and stage. Would you like to learn?" And then he here's the rapier and here's the dagger, and I said, "Sign me up." Right. And I mean, and. I just took to sword fighting like a, a fish in water. I loved it. That's and how, that's how I got a lead part in Pirates of the Caribbean. No, there you no, go. No, not, yeah. not Pirates. What, what is the, uh, the, the Pirates of Penzance? Pirates of Penzance. Yeah. Pirates of Penzance. Well, I was I played in Flag Federation of Live Action Game, just the boffer swords. <laughs> and so they're like, "Does anybody have any sword experience?" I'm like, "Well, I beat people up on a weekend with you know." They're like, they're "Like, all right, you're in." <laughs> Hired. Yeah. 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 They're like, "Okay." That I'm guy. Like, Bring in the bruiser. Yeah. 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 So so it was just um I just started uh learning there and then it was just just like that someone goes who has sword experience and I raised my hand and then I'm choreographing stuff which I was probably way in over my head <laughs> right. you know when I'm like 18 you know choreographing Shakespeare plays I'm like yeah I, I know exactly what I'm doing <laughs> sure right, don't right. stab the guy um and then that led me down to Disney um in uh Walt Disney World theme right. parks and I formed a essentially I formed a sword fighting troop okay and, and how was, cool is that it was awesome basically it was uh, my buddies and I we all had uh acting skills and sword fighting skills, and I said, we're all going to get together, and we're going to do live theater shows, and we're going to sword fight, and it's going to be awesome. And it was. Nice. And then we sort of, um, and then Disney found us, and we did, we were one of the first groups actually into to Walt Disney World uh, that did uh, live sword fighting shows, uh, independent contractors. We okay. brought our own shows, our own swords, our own sword fighting. They loved us. We did... Um, for several years, we were down there doing special events, and uh, every once in a while, I get a phone call. We, we do all the special. We did a lot of special events for them. We did uh, an event called Pirates and Princesses, okay, which was a big thing. We had a big like thirty five foot pirate ship, and there were five of us on there. We were rope swinging and sword fighting and punching and de- kicking and spitting, and it was fantastic. Um, which and that sort of led us into the movies, um, stunt work, which led me into stunt work. Right, and uh, I'm just rambling. I apologize. No, no, no. no. So, so what was um, the stunt work? Was that does anyone know how to fall? Kind of, kind of, pretty much was like that. Is it? Can you fall down? I said, Yeah, I think I could fall down. Sure, well, you're hired. Um, so, so I got uh, my first stunt gig here in Louisiana. Okay. Um, um, hired by a stunt coordinator by the name of Jeff Galpin. Um, great stuntman, great stunt coordinator uh, in the area. 
and um, I worked on a. It was a Disney movie that was down here, and okay. my, my first stunt gig in the movies was a. Uh, it was a car was driving out of out of a driveway, and I had to run as fast, as fast as I could and smash into the back of the car as it hit its brakes. Oh, jeez! Right? Yeah. Wow. It, and and you know it hurt. I'll bet. <laughs> I'm not gonna yeah. lie. I didn't know what to expect because it was a big minivan. Yeah. And I had to smack sort of like face first into the glass, but the only way to do that, you you can't. You couldn't really fake it because they saw me running, you know, the big, the, this glass. And the, yeah. the, and I just ran and ran and ran. They hit the brakes and smack. And, oh. and they didn't have that soft stunt safety glass? No, no. The, <laughs> the, the soft stunt safety glass, it, it wasn't in that day. <laughs> and they kept talking about it all day. Like, we're going to get to the soft glass real soon. And it just, it never showed up. Right. Yeah. Well, you know, it, it this makes me think, is that how you met John Mangus? Because he does some stunt work. He runs into walls, too? He well, runs into uh, cars? John, John, and I met. I think on Tenet Noctis. We that's okay. that's when we we first met. And we we realized we had sort of a, a connection of like we did some stunts and some movies, some movies together, and just you know the film sets are so massive. They're like little roving cities. You, right. you you can work with people and not even realize they're on the same set as you sometimes. Yeah, I can see that. Yeah. Um, and we just we just sort of put two and two together, and we we just yeah, great. And then out came swords, and you know. So you've been. Doing fighting for a very long time, but we had something very interesting on the Tenant Noctis set in that we had um, reenactors that were yeah. there. Oh, they were right? great. Is this the first time you've worked with reenactors? Um, no, I, I've worked with reenactors before. Okay. Um, I would say this would be the first time that I've worked with reenactors in that I was in charge. I was doing the second unit directing. I was in charge of the choreography and the overall picture of all the fight scenes. Uh, but I've been on set with reenactors. Um, I've done stage shows with reenactors um, and, and uh, Renaissance festivals with, with reenactors. Okay. Yeah, um, which I love. I love working with, with guys because they, they, they bring a level of, of accuracy. Right. <laughs> you know, because in film sometimes it's it's not all about – you know, you hear like, well, it's not historically accurate. You know, that sword wouldn't be done, wouldn't look like that or this move wouldn't happen that way. But but it looks good on film and it's telling the story. Right. So you have to decide what's more important, this this precise moment in history or the story that is all encompassing. Yes. Well, Does and, that and, make sense? It, no, you know? it makes perfect sense. Yeah. And I think that a lot of times uh, reenactors do get a little bit put out by productions. Oh, right. That, right. Right. Don't represent you know accurately what happened, and and it, it's it it, it always, I'm always torn because you know sometimes you can go so down far down that rabbit hole of historically accurate that you lose sort of where you're trying to go in the story, and that you lose what the choreography, the message of the story, the choreography, and, and what you're trying to tell, and and that is just as frustrating as not paying any attention to the history or the accuracy, and and it's all and then it kind of becomes fantasy, and it's like well that none of that really makes sense, so it. It's always fun trying to to walk the line, and I think what we did with with Tenet Noctis, I think we found a good a good middle ground. Right. You know, I feel like we 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 got the armor right, and we got the clothing right, and we we had a lot of uh, the fighting was I felt very accurate. Um, and and at the same time, we we embellished where we we should, and you know, I mean, yeah. who was just I mean, I wasn't around back then when they were sword fighting, so I couldn't really tell you, you know, what exactly it's going to look like. But right, pretty much when you swing a sword and you block it. Success, you right. know. <laughs> well, and you bring up a good point as far as uh, some of the really deep action shots and the close-ups with our heroes. Yeah, um, were pretty intense. I mean, there was one scene where John like stabs a guy in the eye in the with eye. a dagger, yeah. and and that was that my was, favorite. That was me. Yeah, that was really <laughs> set up there. But I mean, how do you pull off something like that and still be safe? Um. You know, um, I don't know if you were there when we were rehearsing that that moment with him, but this was that that moment that he was talking about, the, the dagger into the eye, was something I very specifically wanted for his character because it, it sort of represented what his character was all about. Real dirty, real just just dirty and mean and vicious and and um I was like this is this is your move man this is your one big move and we rehearsed it over and over and over and over again um we first we rehearsed it super super slow i tell everybody when i i do fight choreography i say work under jello pick your favorite flavor and pretend like you're in it and that's how fast you move so first we rehearsed it without a dagger and then we did it with like a soft piece of foam right and then we did it with a dagger but we did the dagger reverse so there was no nothing pointy yeah. At the guy's face, and then we we slowly build up to that. I think it took it it took a good half a day to do that, and then when we got out there in the day, we we rehearsed it again like that, and then we found the right camera angle 
to where it sort of masks masks so uh, so when the, the dagger comes to it, it looks like it's going to the guy's eye. Right. Oh, so nobody got stabbed in the face. No well, one just got... once, but you oh, know, okay. he knew he he was a reactor. He knew what he was getting into. It was very, he only had one eye to start with. Yeah, anyways. it, it was, was very a, realistic. A safe, soft stunt dagger. <laughs> yes, stunt glass. Is it just right. like stunt glass. Just like safe, soft stunt glass. <laughs> yeah. Um, Right. So, yeah. I mean, um, what are you what are you working on now? Are you got any projects on the on the plate? Yeah, yeah. So, so we I have two scripts that um, I've just sent out to uh, producers and distribution companies, and okay. um, they on. <laughs> Oddly enough, neither of them are action. Oh, <laughs> they're man. All family, they're all family. I will tell you this. The one that I'm really excited about is called uh, The Pirates of Turtle Bay. Okay. And um, on, and we're looking to actually film that in Florida. We want to crew it here in Louisiana. And okay. we want to film it in Florida because there's just no tropical you know, right. place in Florida uh, here in Louisiana. But um, that one is sort of got – it's going to have some pirate sword fighting in it. Um, it's oh, this, this is great. It's about a little girl whose family owns a, um, a a wildlife, a sea life rescue center. Okay, right. And um, it, an evil land developer comes in, and she decides she's, she's thirteen, and her little buddy, and they decide they're going to save save the whole place. They're going to go out and save it, and they're going to okay. find pirate treasure. Cool, right? And so what they do uh, for fun is they they both they write comics. Nice, right? So right. we have a comic. So, so what we see is as they go on this adventure to try to save the uh, the institute, we see them as their comic characters that they are that they write about. So there's like, some pirate sword fighting, and there's treasure to find in there. It's it's it's, it's kind of my tip of the hat to Goonies. Yeah, and you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. no, so that sounds a, cool. It's going to be a fun little family play, uh, piece, and uh, if I have my way, there'll be some good sword fighting action. In and it. and I'm, that's in the pitch phase right now. It so so we it, it, it we just passed the pitch phase. Um, we we've got a producer. Who's interested in it? We've got um, oh, I can't remember the girl's name. She's on a uh, Nickelodeon show called The Thunderbirds. Thunder. It, I'm not the demographic for gotcha. it. <laughs> gotcha. Okay. Right? But she's one of the leads on that, and we've got her. Her whole crew is in, uh, manager, agents, families interested in doing the script. They read it. They really, really like it. And now um, we're going to investors uh, right now, and I I really think this is going to be a good one to get involved with. So nice. anybody who's out there who'd like to. Get involved in filmmaking. Look me up. All right. Uh, well, is... you bring up a good point. How can folks find you? How... Oh, I'm like Google my name, Mike Mayhall. I'm all over the internet. <laughs> right. Well, I, I saw your credits on IMDb. Uh, IMDb. Yeah. Um, you know, I have a web page, Mike Mayhall. Um, you know, Facebook, Mike Mayhall. Um, on Facebook, uh, Jake's Road has got a Facebook page. Uh, my production company, Mayhem Productions, is on Facebook as well. Okay. Um, so I'm I'm pretty easy to find. Actually, right. now that I think about it, that that's a little scary, actually. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to just get flooded, flooded. with requests at this point. That's fantastic. So, and and the uh, the Vimeo link mm -hmm. for uh, Jake's Road, that's on the Jake's Road Facebook page, right? It, it should be on the Jake's Road Facebook page. If you just Google, type in to the search engine Vimeo Jake's Road, it should pop up as well. It's it's really, really accessible. And guys, r remember that, that Mr. Mayhaw here, uh, you know, very kindly give us a, a discount code in 99 99 put that into the form when you're when you're checking it out you can rent it for 99 cents and see a fantastic horror thriller film thanks yeah, yeah thank I, hope, I hope everybody enjoys it thanks for having me man. oh absolutely yeah. man um so guys stay tuned when we get back we're going to close the show out as we do every time with this week in geek history guys you're listening to the week in geek on wrno 99.5 news talk Hey there, Gulf Coast. Hattiesburg's only comic book and pop culture convention, Southern Geek Fest, is coming May 20th and 21st to the Forest County Multipurpose Center. Two days of comic books, cosplay, media guests, authors, vendors, and more. Southern Geek Fest has a huge lineup of guests, including Peyton Witch from Stranger Things and Don Teams from The Walking Dead. For tickets and more information, go to southerngeekfest.com. Southern Geek Fest, we'll see you there. Tubby and Coos Mid City Bookshop at 631 North Carrollton, just off Orleans in Carrollton. Books, board games, and geeky t shirts. Find them on the web at tubbyandcoos.com and sign up for their geekly newsletter. Tubby and Coos, more than books. Kasha's Bazaar, located at 5727 Jessen Highway, across from Red, White, and Blue. Geeky collectibles and more. Find them on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash Kasha's Bazaar. Kasha's Bazaar, 5727 Jessen Highway, the unflea market.
in a New Orleans that never was and never will be. Airships float high above the city while platoons of clockwork automatons patrol the streets below. In Storyville, pirates, streetwalkers, gamblers, and thieves prowl back alleys in search of their next mark. New Orleans by Gaslight, the premier anthology of locally written and locally produced steampunk poetry and fiction, all set in Victorian New Orleans. Buy it now, available in both paperback and Kindle versions at Amazon.com. New Orleans by Gaslight. Friends, is your morning tea just not your cup of tea? Then try the tea blends of Viridian Tea Company. At Viridian Tea Company, they sell blends guaranteed to make you think outside the box. With such blends as My Enemy's Tears, Goth Librarian, Cyberpunk, and many more, your tea experience will be out of this world. Look for the blends at Tubby & Coo's Mid-City Bookshop, located at 631 North Carrollton, or on Etsy at Viridian Tea Company. Try Viridian Tea Company today. Your taste buds will thank you. You've waited for it, and now it's here. Get your very own Week in Geek Radio Show t-shirt and help support our show. These 100% cotton black t-shirts with the Week in Geek Radio Show logo are going fast. So don't wait. Go to twigradio.com and order your shirt now. Just go to twigradio.com forward slash shop and get your very own Week in Geek Radio Show t-shirt. 15 bucks up to XL, $17 for 2X and 3X. That's twigradio.com forward slash shop. Now, back to the Week in Geek on News Talk 99.5 WRNO with David D. Squared and Brian Held. Tell your friends. Tell your enemies. Yeah, you definitely want to tell your enemies. Welcome back, New Orleans. You're listening to the Week in Geek on News Talk 99.5 WRNO. Hey, this is your host, uh, Brian Held. Dave D. Squared will be in here in just a second so we can cover... The final segment of the show is we call it This Week in Geek History. This Week in Geek History. We're sending you back to the future. Yes! Oh my gosh! This Week in Geek History is brought to you by Five Stones Media. Find them on the net at fivestonesmedia.com. This Week in Geek History. Yes! Oh my gosh! All right, uh, I got one for you to guess right out the... What? Never mind. Oh. All right, go ahead. What is it? Uh, The first one out of the gate is April 3rd, 1975. 1975? What? What it it is, it's it's a movie, so you got to guess it. All right. All right, you ready? Yes. Starring Graham Chapman, John Cleese... Eric Idle, oh, Terry oh, oh, oh. It's, 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 it's a damn Monty Python movie. Terry uh, Jones, Michael Palin, and Carol Cleveland. All right, it's, it's either going to be the Holy Grail or or uh, Always Look on the Bright Side the, of Life. That's uh, Meaning of Life. It's uh, uh, no, I'm sorry, no, that's uh, Life of Brian. Life of Brian. You're right. Uh, no, it's Monty Python and the Holy Grail. Yeah, so got oh, little, 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 little bunny. It's a cute little bunny. <laughs> None shall pass. Yes, I love that. What movie. happens when Gandalf meets uh, the Black Knight? You <laughs> shall not pass. Uh, it, it's Let's a go to the draw then. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> What's next? What's next? Uh, this one. This one's interesting. Uh, it was April fourth, nineteen sixty-eight. MGM releases their science fiction film two thousand one, A Space Odyssey. Kubrick. Uh, Kubrick. Yes. I read the book. Uh, I actually read the book. That wow. I was required to. It was high school. I'll bet. Now, what's interesting is, of course, that movie, you know, broke a lot of ground, you know, uh, informed a lot of movies that came after it. But what's interesting is that IBM had a problem with it. What? Why? They didn't like the fact that a computer was portrayed as as wanting to kill people, right? Why? Why? Because they maybe, make maybe computers. didn't like being you know bossed around. Well, I don't like being bossed around. So you always boss me around. Kubrick, <laughs> I'm, I'm Kub- sorry, Brian, I can't do that. <laughs> Kubrick did make a point of removing the IBM logo from tons of computer oh, equipment. Well, the, you hold- should have led with that. Well, if, if, but hold on, <laughs> if he had an IBM logo on him, it, well, but the logo could still be spotted on a handful of instrument panels, uh, most notably the key uh, wrist pads and, and that the astronauts have. Uh, but as a result, IBM management they frowned on any mention of 2001. And uh, even went as far as to actively discourage your employees from going to see it. How crazy is that? I want you to know that if you look throughout the entire movie, you will not see one single solitary apple on there. Nowhere. 
Yeah, no Apple. Right. Because Apple doesn't kill people. <laughs> Only dirty androids. Not not yet. Apple's working on it. <laughs> it's going to be a new app. <laughs> <laughs> Kill all humans, Apple. Right. All right. <laughs> Next is uh, April 5th, 1995, sees uh, the Security Administrator Tool for Analyzing Networks come into an existence. And it's an app. Is it an anagram? It is. It means Satan. <laughs> <laughs> That's a security administrator tool for analyzing networks, and the acronym is Satan. But well, that's uh, not nice. <laughs> I just thought I thought it was kind of weird, but it's a um, it's used by network administrators to. Um, uh, what if that's see- a poor little old lady at a church who wants to like you know make sure that you know the choir director is you know <laughs> getting paid and that you know uh, I don't know it just people get paid. I, I don't think that the choir director is going to be, be checking mm, out the Satan. <laughs> I don't think she's going to be checking out the network of their their church or whatever. You don't know, but uh, it was it was basically a very user friendly network scanner. Uh, and it's easily- Satan. He's going to try to lure you in with all <laughs> kinds of great promises. This app can do anything. Yeah, but I actually I went and checked it out. It's still an active application. People you are went still and checked use- out Satan. <laughs> I have to verify this Sweet stuff. Jesus. Satan. <laughs> What's next? Uh, what's next is uh, April 6, 1967. Mm. It's uh, the uh, episode from Star Trek, The City on the Edge of Forever. That's the first time it aired. Uh, oh, was of, that when they kissed? Uh, no, no. No. It was one of the most critically acclaimed episodes. It was awarded the 1968 Hugo Award for Best Dramatic Presentation. It was basically uh, they beamed down to a planet, Scotty. Um, had been injected with some sort of drug, and he kind of got crazy, and he went down to the planet, and w- there was a portal. He went back in time, and then... The- I don't remember that. Oh, it was McCoy. You're right. Thank oh, you. okay. And uh, he went back in time and then changed history, and then the Enterprise disappeared because they changed <gasps> history. And so Kirk and Spock were down on the planet. They go through the portal, and, and they basically had to track down McCoy and... Uh, find him and and get him to not change the historical elements that he changed, so that they could bring the Enterprise back and and save the day at the end of the episode. But it was just, it was really well done. You know, there was uh, a lady that they and ran they won in. an award. They won the Hugo. They won a number of awards. Wow. Uh, just, Hugo was the most notable. So, all and right. Do you, and do you know what the other one up, up for the Hugo was that year? No. Trouble with Triples by David Gerald. Oh wow, I love that episode. That's a who great... the hell is that talking, Brian? That Who's w- that strange voice I'm hearing? That is our Facebook administrator, Cyber Ernie. Hey, Ernie. Hey there. <laughs> Get right in there, Ernie. Ah. Don't be shy. Now he's 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 a wealth of knowledge in in the geek world. He so, is. Yes. All right, you ready for the next one? Sure. All right, this is kind of interesting. On uh, April eighth, nineteen eighty one. Disc jockey Larry Norton ends a record-breaking continuous broadcast of 484 hours on radio station WGRQ-FM in Buffalo, New York. He Wait, was, what did they do? He was on a continuous live radio broadcast. For how long? For 484 hours. That's a little over 20 days. How the heck? What, what did he do? With he, no dead air? He was <laughs> sleeping for like two hours at a time. Well, then who talked when he was sleeping? Well, he, I'm sure he put it on. Is he you sleep know. talking? <laughs> mm-hmm. but, Stupid radio uh, show. <laughs> 14 days on the air. <laughs> Hate life. Right. Filibuster, filibuster, filibuster. But there were some charitable elements to it. I, I, When I was looking through the research, I just thought it was kind of interesting. Are, are you ready for a 484-hour uh, marathon of on the air? Absolutely. <laughs> we haven't used all our Spreaker hours. We have all these hours for, for like, you know, Internet broadcasting of our show. And uh, how many hours do we – I think we have, like, 2,000 hours logged up. Come on, let's let's use them up. Well, we could do that. It's a challenge. We'll do it for charity, damn it. Right, right. No. Stupid charities. We'll do it for them. Yeah, okay. Pick it. Pick a dumb charity. Oh, God. Stop, Dave. <laughs> Next item on the list, April 9th, 1965. I put this one here just for you, Dave. Oh, you're so sweet. Yeah, the Houston Astrodome opens as the first professional sports facility with artificial turf, otherwise uh, known as... AstroTurf. There you go. I see what you did there. Mm-hmm. Yes. Wow. So, uh... Sports ball. Yeah, just, that's all you, Dave. <laughs> you have no idea about... You, you just saw something sports-related, and we're like, hey, okay, we'll do that. Well, I, see, I was it thinking sounds, about it you. It sounds like the Jetsons' dog. I'll write it down. <laughs> So, Dave, do you want to do celebrity birthdays now real quick? Sure. All right. So uh, on the 3rd was Alec Baldwin. 
Boo. What? What's wrong with Alec Baldwin? Boo. Okay, fine. Uh, on the fourth, Robert Downey Jr. Hey, hey. Yes. I like a good drunk guy. Yeah, no, he's awesome. Uh, on the he's f- sober now, though. He is. But he's a very good actor now. He's a fantastic actor. Imagine. No, no, he, he's pretty good when he was drunk, too. Right. So, I don't know. Whatever. He's just an amazing actor. Oh, he is. We'll, we'll keep him as he is. Okay. All right. On the fifth, uh, Haley Atwell. Oh, yeah. Oh. Uh, Jay, uh, Jay, boo, 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 boo. You just said it. Uh, Agent Peggy Carter. Carter. Peggy yeah. Carter. Yes. <laughs> uh, on the sixth, uh, Billy D. Williams. <laughs> Code 45. <laughs> Most definitely. Of course, Lando as well. Who? Lando Calrissian. He was the spokesperson for Code 45. He was. He was. And he uh, did some indie movie called yeah. Star Wars, right? So on the seventh, we got uh, Jackie Chan. Oh, man. That dude is beyond awesome. He is. He's incredibly awesome. And uh, he just didn't he just get an Oscar not that long ago? Uh, he was awarded. He would, it was a big deal. Uh, My favorite movie is still like Shanghai Nights. Yeah, him and Owen Wilson. That yeah. one, that, yeah, that, that, that's, that's just a, a good funny movie. movie. I know. That, huh? that both the whole series of them. Have yeah, you seen the whole yeah. Series I mean, of them? And there were so many silly puns. And then you know he's like he's like, what's your cowboy name? John Wayne. Wayne. That's a horrible <laughs> name. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Last on my list is on the eighth is uh, Katie Sackhoff. Oh, uh, the, from ba- Star Cabacula. Battle Star Galactica, yes. Yeah, I said, that's what I said. <laughs> Booty trap. <laughs> yes. So, Dave, we still have a few minutes left. Um, yeah. Let's let's talk to Ernie real quick. Yes. Let, let, let's find out how many cups of coffee he has a day to maintain our website. Oh, jeez. And our Facebook page. Probably not enough. Probably yeah. not. not. Not not enough. Not enough to do that and stay awake at work. <laughs> oh, man. But, hey, uh, Ernie, <laughs> you now are an author. You've been doing a lot of work in, in the writing space. Tell us tell us about it. Well, let's see. I've been working a lot with Pro Se Productions. Uh, good folks over there have, for some reason, thought my scribblings were okay. So, <laughs> <laughs> so that temporary insanity aside... Yeah, um, I've got two books out right, two anthologies that I'm in right. out right now. Oh, wow. um, Monster Mayhem, uh, an anthology of monstrous proportions. You can find it on Luling Press. Okay. That's from Beyond the Threshold Productions. And, and wait, and we had the guy from Monster Mayhem. Yes, you did. You did. Uh, you had Josiah Callaway on yes. you know, about this time last year, May, May or Ju- June, maybe of Something last like year, that. somewhere somewhere around there. Yeah, but just yeah. real quick, uh, uh, FYI, Ernie is the only person I know who has listened to every single episode of The Week in Geek. Wow. But it's had no effect. <laughs> 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 so what What else you got? So let's see. We got that. We got uh, right now. The other, the other one I'm out in is When the Shadow Sees the Sun, Creatives Surviving Depression. Okay. Uh, mm-hmm. That's on Amazon Press. And it's on Amazon. It's a Pro Se, by Pro Se Productions. Right. And it is a charity work. Right. All proceeds from the book go to chair go to charity for for depression. Okay. Uh, the charities are listed in the book. I don't know them all right off the top of my head. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. No, no, no. It's um, and it's good. I got a copy like hot off the presses, like one of the first ones yeah. that were released. That was good stuff. Yeah. Um. And uh, I've got a poem in there that leads it all is is set, opens it up, and mm-hmm. you can find me at wordpress dot com russell dot com. No, that's good stuff. So yeah, go go hunt it up. You can see some of this stuff. I've got some stuff out there. Uh, some excerpts and some stuff I'm working on. I can tell you what. I know that a certain Mr. Mike Mayhall is actually looking for a writer right now. Oh, yeah. Always. Oh, we, we could talk. We yeah. should talk. We, we should, should totally talk. We should, we should totally talk. You see, we're, yeah. all, we're all about networking. All, yeah. all, 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 all about the networking. 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 That's right. Yeah. It's, it's, it's a spider web thing of yeah. life right. or whatever. Yeah. Inter, interwebs, yeah. spider webs, whatever. So, something web. Something web. <laughs> something, something web. It's sticky. <laughs> yeah. Well, cool. So, I mean, is... Is this something that you've just gotten into? Have you always written? I have written for a long time, uh, ever since you know, the far, from uh, since elementary school. You know, I, I think a lot of writers do that. Yeah, yeah. You just start writing. Uh, but I've only been trying to market my work for about the last two years. And right now, the, I've got at least six lined up in the pipeline with Pro Se Productions okay. uh, wow. to be in different anthologies. And I'm working on a digest novel right now. That's awesome, and that's uh, Mr. Tommy Hancock. That's Tommy Hancock, is yeah, editor Pro Se for, Productions. Yep. Yeah, so uh, they've got a lot of great stuff. Uh, Pro Se is a uh, a pulp house. They do yes, a lot of pulp stuff. A lot of pulp, uh, all kinds of pulp, and it's not just noir. It's not just like detective noir. I mean, there's weird pulp. There's it's it's more about the action and and right. just a, a variety of stories. Uh, one of the things I know that they they just put out 
Um, well, let me see real quick. Um, <laughs> as I don't know right offhand. I wasn't expecting that question. But no, they've done they've done some done a lot of good stuff. Um, yeah, and all kinds of genres. The pulp is more about the action, about it moving the story. It's, it's fast paced. They're they're fast. They're they keep moving. No, that's that's I love I love fast paced stories. Um, Much better than one that just puts you to sleep, right? I mean, right. Would you rather something that that pops? Oh, exactly. While we have. Oh, we're, we're getting pretty close to the end of the show. I'm just going to mention real quick. We're going to talk about it next show. Is Our, our book of the month is going to be Mistborn. Ooh, yes. Oh, yes. Thanks nice. to Mr. Mike Mayhaw. He, he, got, he got me a copy of this. I've been, I've been reading it, and oh, my God. It's uh, Brandon, Brandon Sanderson. Brandon Sanderson. Yes. Man, he's, he's, gosh, he's amazing. All right, uh, guys, if you missed any part of tonight's show or you want to hear your favorite part again, you can catch us on Spreaker.com or Spreaker for your smartphone or tablet iTunes, YouTube, the iHeartRadio app, and at uh, WRNO.com. That's right. Uh, Guys, (laughs) thank you very much. Keep your geek flag race high. G-F-L. WRNO FM, New Orleans, and iHeartRadio Station.